is the documentation would the documentation suffice or um, do you think a recording of the same would have captured a, 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 any steps that the documentation may not? Um, I can I can maybe also do some recording, but it will be like very short. All I did was installed uh, some missing packages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then just started the started the service. Yeah, I mean, if you can do that, uh, that will be. You know, uh, you know, you can share that as well. No matter how small it is. Okay, sure, no problem. Yeah, so like this. These are all the R RPMs that I installed, which were missing because I, when I install Linux, I only only install some select options, not everything. Okay. And yeah, and then I just uh, configured the service, started it, modified the conf files, uh, restarted the service, and then it went went back here, and then access the uh, application okay yeah okay but, but I, I don't see uh, okay are you sharing your screen oh sorry hold on a second mm -hmm. okay. now you can see my screen yes okay so these are all the RPMs that I found missing see this uh, um, HTTPD mm -hmm. and then there are some a APR and these uh, dependent um, RPMs that are also required by mm -hmm. by HTTPD, so I installed all of them, and mm -hmm. after I install, I just uh, configured the service and the Apache service, and then started okay. it. Okay. Check the status, then look for the file, the conf file. Mm -hmm. um, modify the file uh, with the contents we discussed yesterday. Um, okay. And then I, then right. I after after the changes, I, I restarted the service. All right. I can show you what changes I made to the yeah let me just because this is being recorded so this will also become part of today's uh, recorded session okay so this is the load module portion that I added and then there's a if module this is what we discussed yesterday so this is the host where my um, many servers are running this is the port where he's listening and this is the uh, right this is the path right so, um, yeah so if yeah if ms1 has another application with some other context root yeah you can even front end that application which is again on manage server ms1 with the same uh, Apache, but just by changing the context use the match expression, right? Okay, changing or just adding it, adding to it? No, you no. It will it will require a new if module. A new if oh, Okay, all right, got it. Okay, so the new if module means uh, these these both of these entries, or just one entry? You, no, both of these entries. Both. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not very really sure about that, but anyways. Okay. Okay. And then so after that, you I. Have yeah, he's online, but I think he's on mute. As well. I'm sure he's listening. And after that, I just uh, I just went here and I just uh, accessed the application without specifying the port, and I was able right. to you know, see the page. All right. All right. Good. So, uh, is there some compulsion why he is on mute? Uh, I think he was. Hold on. He was trying to access his other laptop. Uh, let me send him a message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see if he's on Google Chat. Mm, I don't know. No, he's not on chat either.
think we, we just got my message for half an hour delay, so probably. No, he was here. He was around like we spoke, and he said that he's gonna go get a cup of tea, and he was back. Okay. Uh, he said that he was trying to configure his other laptop to join the meeting and continue working on the other one where he has mm -hmm. all his all his VMs. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Should I call him? Let me just see if I can. Oh uh, yeah, if you can call him or in the five minutes more so maybe he waits. <clears throat> okay, let me just call him then. Let me try calling him. I'm parallelly uh, working on um, video editing. So, sorry, please say again. I don't know if you. Yeah, I just phoned no, him. I, uh, and I, do you? Do you? Do you? Yes, please go ahead. No, I, I said, do you uh, have an idea about uh, uh, video editing and have you tried um, to get into it? I tried, but I couldn't, no, I couldn't get, no. I tried, I couldn't get, get it done. Okay, so, so uh, you know, uh, which, what software, tools, you know, what, what, what were you actually trying to achieve, you know, uh, what, what was your profile around uh, video editing? I have no idea how to do it. I, I as you suggested, I tried to use the um, Windows uh, Media, sorry, Windows uh, Movie Maker. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do what I intended to do, and then I downloaded another one, which people suggested is easier, and I I couldn't do that either using that software. So. Okay, no, you can you can leave that, you know, or just, just email me, you know, uh, with the details that from here to here we you need to remove or you know you need to remove from this time to this time and I'll take care of this. Okay. Okay. Okay then I will maybe when I when I will be reviewing the videos then I will take a note and then Right. Yeah we can do that. Okay. Uh, is this guy coming online? He should be. I phoned him, I didn't pick up the phone, I you know uh, I got his voice like his answering machine. Okay. So uh, Maybe he's waiting for uh, the exact time. Mm -hmm. uh, a minute ago, basically. I'm sorry? No, hey guys, I'm back. I'm like, sorry. Uh, I was... Uh, okay. okay, Ganesh, uh, we would like to begin uh, today's session and uh, uh, we will... Uh, uh, First, initially uh, cover uh, web uh, uh, auditing, basically console audit, and uh, then we'll move on to uh, the other topics. Uh, Amir, when you click on domains, can you click on the domains? Yes, and please maximize maximize your window. Yes, I did. Okay, go to advanced. <coughs> Okay. Yeah, do I need to log and edit or 
not here no that's fine uh, you, you 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 can lock and edit and just come down okay can lock and edit and come down yeah have you locked and edit no do you see configuration order type there yes here yeah. okay can you uh, get the drop down yeah. it says change log change audit change log and audit okay yeah so uh, what this basically does is if you say click on change log what it basically does is it does a record in your admin server log file any activity performed by any user on the weblogic server console basically so you have got a user called is weblogic right you can have a user one user two user three de deployer tester tester one tester two tester three deployer one deployer two deployer three there is that you can have any, any number of users so what each user is doing on your weblogic console is what you can if 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 you want an audit for that as to who did what so you okay. can enable it from here save the changes and any user who does anything it will be recorded in the log file like if i created a managed server it will be recorded that user uh, weblogic created a managed server user weblogic created a cluster user weblogic deleted a server anything okay, okay. so this is basically once you configure this you can uh, do uh, record all the uh, and, uh, uh, actions that each user performs on the weblogic console. Make sense? Yeah, so that's the, the, you're talking about audit, right? The audit option. Yes. Okay. The, the change, change lock, change audit, you know, uh, change lock and audit. So uh, there, there is slight difference between them. You can just read uh, what the documentation says. I, I'm not very well aware of, but what okay. I did is change lock and audit. I tried that option okay. and it basically logs all the very minutest details that we perform on the administration console everything will be recorded so that if somebody wants to do an audit as to who messed up something he can just look into the log files and every users record wherever he clicked and wherever whatever he deleted changed everything will be recorded in the audit file so that's what is the use for change lock and edit okay configuration audit type okay now you can move up move on for the uh, at the very top yeah now you will find an option record do you see that at the very top next to help yeah here yes okay. now if you click on that record button you can click you know no issues you can. if you click on the record button it will generate a script for you a python script a py script okay and the path okay. is mentioned already yeah okay now yeah now whatever things like you are creating a managed server you are creating a jms server you are creating a data source you are deploying an application whatever you are doing will be recorded in this script okay so the use of this would be uh, if you want to automate the deployment next time all you will have to do is execute this script python script and it will perform all the actions you performed via the web logic console okay got it so it can make you very strong with respect to automating you know and being a a, a web logic uh, or a, middle, a web logic administrator basically who uh, uh, you know who is comfortable with automating uh, different uh, tasks that, that that you need to perform so okay. this is a good way of utilizing this option basically so you don't have to learn the python script all it does is automatically records in it and once the python script py script is saved how will you execute it java space weblogic.wlst you have done that before yeah 
Okay, then give a space and give the path of the Python script. That's it. So it will, it will instead of opening the WLST uh, console, it will simply execute that script for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So this is about uh, recording. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, configuration audit type. So these two things I just wanted to tell you about. I think you guys are comfortable with it. Now, um, currently the domain is logged, right? Lock and edit is present. Where did we create the Python script? Uh, like, is it asking you the path or something? No, uh, no, look here. When you press the record button, it, uh -huh. tell, it tells me where this uh, script will be generated. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, here's okay. The it shows you the path. Okay. Yeah, it shows the path. Yeah. Okay. okay, so um, uh, what I was I what, what was I about? Yeah. So what you can do is like lock and edit, right? Currently, lock and edit is pressed. Am I right, uh, Amit? Yes. I want you to write a Python script so that the configuration is released. Which, whereby I mean the release configuration button gets pressed, the lock and edit button gets released, and okay, yeah. So whatever you're clicking, I'm, I don't want you to click and release, but I want you to write a Python script to release the okay. button. That that is your assignment. Okay. Got the point? So yeah. when you click on release configuration, what it will do is it will record the command to release the configuration in the Python script. All you have to do is just simply lock and edit to the by clicking and running this python script it will automatically release the lock okay got the point yeah i got the point yeah. okay and uh, ganesh you can do that as well okay so uh, i'll proceed with yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah i'll proceed with uh, the clustering that we were about to do um, amir i want you to deploy the uh, application on uh, three managed server, MS1, MS2, and and on one server which is on WLS2. So deploy the application on one server on WLS2 and two servers on WLS1. So okay. deploy this application on three servers. See, all you'll have to do is click on the application. Yeah, uh, of course, yes, you'll have to start all the uh, applications. Okay. Okay, it says the machine which when it's the machine it's in the node manager is down at armor so yes um, if, if, if you've already set the alias I think you can simply yes start the node manager in the alias okay man um, you, Amir has already gotten the practice of not using the node manager good yeah I, I don't remember if I if I configured here or not but I guess, I guess you guys can configure node manager both the machines. I remember that. Yeah. Let me see what happened here. Okay. See some errors. Yeah, some issue. So you're starting a node manager or? No, I'm starting the uh, manage server for. Because you're not configured the node manager on this machine, sir? Um, I don't remember, but uh, Ganesh, if you have not configured the node manager, can't you start the WebLogic server? You can, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what he's doing, right? Right? Yeah. So the issue was ideally not with the node manager. He was trying to start the server using the start script and not using the node manager. And um, the problem was the boot dot properties in the security folder was not present. Okay. okay. 
Okay, this one failed for some reason. I can show you the log, but I don't know. I couldn't figure out why is it failing. Yeah, okay, you can show me the logs if I uh, okay, have a quick okay. idea. I'll let you know. Okay. Oh, this is root, sorry. Uh, I'm mean, going forward. Just increase the uh, display man for us, you know. Okay, we, the size of. We, we, is it good? Yeah, yeah. We, we, you can use your yeah, full we, screen, we, possibly. We, I don't know if you want to switch back and forth to Windows. But if you use no, your. The, the, yeah, but uh, Ganesh, this is good enough, right? So this one was complaining, uh, see here it says uh, server fail reason, startup mode is set to standby, server cannot start in because without admin okay. channel. Uh, server cannot start. Yeah, do one thing, Yeah. do one thing, click, click on the admin server. Okay. No, click on the domain. Okay, domain. Yeah. Mm. Uh, click enable administration port. Uh, this one? Edit. Okay. Yeah. I know this would not help, but let's see. Okay, anyway. Activate changes. No, but this one, yeah, it, it failed. Please see. Okay, we have to shut down all the managed servers then for this one. Yes, 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 please. So should I shut do that? Shut down all the managed servers. Yeah, yeah, you can quickly do that. Okay, all right. If you figure out if this is the reason, right, so we'll be good. Okay, this one. Is, uh, okay, that reminded me, how can I find out the process for managed server? I want to, you know, kill the process. I tried looking for you know the MS1 and um, I killed some of the process, but that just uh, you know <coughs> kicked me out of the OS or you know maybe. Okay, uh, uh, see, uh, Ganesh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, the way to find it out is different for different operating systems. So mm -hmm. let me ask you, on which operating system do you face this problem? Same, uh, I'm using I mean, it's, uh, VMs. So or here Linux? it is. Yeah, so here it is. I can see it. I can see MS4. I just grabbed for MS4. Okay. Yeah, and I can see the process is running, so I can just I'm just gonna kill him. That's it. I don't know uh, why. hold on, Amir, 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 Amir. Yeah. Hold on, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the process or the one below? Uh, well, this is the application. Yeah, this is this is the process. So, that so memory, you, memory parameters that tells us that that's, that was the process and not the one above. A memory parameter? Um, how we differentiate it between two processes? Well, one has, well you have to do your, you know, uh, your <laughs> you have to look at the output of this this command and then figure out which one it is. Yeah, you can you can just highlight. Uh, hold on, uh, the WebLogic server name. Do you have that? Yeah, WebLogic got name. We, we discussed that before, uh, Ganesh. Can you highlight only that part, please, in the grip part? Second line, Amir. The I second just, line. Yeah I, yeah, I just changed the, uh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, this one, just highlight that. So this tells you, Ganesh, that this is managed server 4. Okay, okay. So I can I can try to grip that that as well, and then that will only give me that process. Right, grab for the managed server name, yes. Or grab for weblogic dot name, and then see what comes out. Equal to my MS4, or you can simply grab for the managed server name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, are you good, uh, Amit? Or the Let me just see if I, I have to kill this guy too. No, you don't have to kill the admin. You don't have to kill the admin server. Okay. okay. Just activate changes. Uh, oh, oh, there was to... another. Um, there's another question. 
What what is there what is, is a manage server two in domain Google Apps okay. and manage. Oh, just a sec. Let, let, let's you know uh, restart the servers and then uh, we'll okay. take care of it. Can you go to Google Console back, please, Amir? No, my friend. Just change the URL. Why do you fight with it? On the top, just change the URL. Yes. It's not open going. A new, open a new tab. That's fine. No, same message. Restart the admin server. Okay. See, the, the, this is a learning basically. You know, when this happens, you're not able to get the console. What do you do? Okay. Step number one: restart the admin server. That's it. No, I give me the same error message. Even after restarting? Yeah. So should we go and change the uh, thing in the config file now to get rid of the change we made? Okay. Yes, please. And the config file. Mm. <laughs> and for now, just change the uh, startup mode also of the server from standby to running. We will figure that out later. So, what was that change we made? Was uh, admin port? So how do I find out the chain we, uh, we made? Uh, channel, channel, is that the one? No, no this, is, no, this is. No, listen, listen. Amit, Amit, just stay with the admin server. Don't move down. Okay. Actually, that was at the uh, at the domain level, not the admin server, was it? Okay, so it should be up further up. Yeah. Let me just okay, come down. Just maximize uh, the uh, window. You know, by can you pull down and just expand it? You keep moving down and let's see you know if you find something substantial now oh, this is the end of the uh, settings for okay, the domain. Keep, keep keep moving down keep moving down please a a little fast okay Hold on, hold on, yeah, yeah, that, that is where it is. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Administration port enabled equal to two. You see that? Uh, where is that? Uh, embedded added app right right in the center of your screen. Above session test dot work. Yeah. Yes. Okay, here this one. Okay. So you just yes. just remove just, it? Yeah, just a DD, double D. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, log. So I have to remove the log file now? Yes. Okay, and there was uh, in some temp folder. No. 
Where is supposed to be? This is uh, um, the admin server log. Yeah. Go to the admin server. Where is your admin server? Server's admin server, right? Is it on WLS2? It is on WLS2, yeah. Okay. Go to your domain home. This is domain home. My friend NLS, yes. Uh, go to servers. Yes. Oh, uh, admin server. Yes. And then temp. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a log file. Just remove it. Yes. Always MB is always a good option. I'm just telling you FYI. Okay, keep okay. that in mind. Okay. Okay. No, still same error. Mm. Yeah, the log file is back, but I think it's okay. Uh, okay, uh, you are inside temp. Why are you inside temp? Come out of temp, please. Do ls. Okay, do one thing. Just just rename all the files. Cache, uh, data, temp. Just rename mb mb yes. Underscore bk. Yeah. Data as well. Eat temp. Temp is okay. I think we are good. Then okay, I'll restart and just see if any process is running for the admin server. First grab for the admin server. Okay. Okay, you're okay. Good. okay no problems, no problems. Maybe it was already running. No, let me just see. I think it was running and I started again. Yeah, there's a yeah, couple. Yeah, that's what I... Yeah, okay. Mm. Kill both of them. Kill both of them. Okay. No start one. Always grab and check if there is no other process. Okay. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, that's better. Okay, we're not fighting with that error. We'll we'll take that error some point in time later. Yeah, sure. What no we'll problem. do is yeah. yeah, what we'll do is uh just change that uh mode startup mode to so stand by get the running mode and then start the server, okay? Sorry, and where do we have to do that? I don't know. For the, you're talking about the MS2, right? The one that has failed. I'm talking about MS2, startup mode. Remember, we discussed about it. Yes, we did. Okay, they're all running. Let me just double check the startup mode. It's supposed to be here. No, it's good. Okay. I have to change this for uh, MS3? No, that's not required. It's it started, okay. You can leave okay. the st staging mode. I'm, I, I just said the startup mode, not the deployment mode. 
startup mode. Have you changed that? Sorry, a startup mode would be where? Uh, Ganesh would tell you. Ganesh, can you tell me where yeah. it is? Uh, start server. Oh, startup mode uh, for? For the many servers. I remember I saw it somewhere. You were just um, uh, you were just using uh, oh that was the deployment now you wanted to change to the startup mode. Okay, where does this uh, lock in? Where the log where the lock in? Oh, he showed me on the first day like uh, the standby or like uh, you know during during startup it can be in the admin mode or startup mode. No, um, yes, uh, I'm sorry I cannot <laughs> sorry, but I cannot stop laughing at this moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm laughing is with the reaction of Amir, where, where, where he's, he's very concerned about where the lock and button went away. But yeah. Amir, yeah. you should know where it is, right? It should be in the deployment, like under deployment, and then from there you. Uh, because hold that's. On. Hold on, hold on, Ganesh, what are you talking about? I mean, <laughs> we're looking for startup mode, so logically. No, I'm, I'm, no, hold on, hold on. First, I'm talking about the lock and edit. Oh, lock and edit. Okay, that's, uh, that's all the way in the left. Oh, okay, here it is. I found it. <laughs> yes. How did okay, how did now, the, now this, yeah, now, how did that disappear? Yeah. I I think you know we we removed it and okay. I, I don't know. No answers. Okay. Uh, you have to ask Oracle. But anyways, um, hmm. uh, uh, where is the startup mode? Okay, startup mode. Uh, I, I if I remember correctly, Ganesh is or. Uh, um, you know, uh, parallel you open the training video and he's trying to go through where we discussed that. Really? That will, that will take him days, I guess, to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay, somewhere... Uh, go, to, go, go to that particular server, yes. Okay. Uh, go to advanced, you, you are the right. Oh, advanced. advanced. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. That's why I couldn't see it. Yes. It's already running for this server. Go for MS2. Oh, I think they're all running. Is, no, is is MS2 also running? Yeah, I started all of them. And all, so, all of them are running? Yeah, uh, like MS1, 3 and 4. No, what running. about MS2? What about MS2? Click on MS2. MS2, if it fails to start so, with so, the error. Server start, uh, startup mode. Can you change the startup mode for MS2? Have you changed that? It, uh, Lock in edit, advance. Okay. Oh, this is already on standby. To running? That's why I'm saying. Yes. I see. Oh, okay. now, now it should come up. Okay. Yeah. What happened to this guy? I never changed anything on him. No, man. We did that. We changed it ourselves. And Ganesh asked that question, man. Go back to the recordings. You guys okay. need a, a a couple of weeks break. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let me try starting it now. I, I, I'm listening until that. Those weeks would be different than the previous weeks. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, just start, start on the servers and uh, uh, we will now deploy the session test application to two servers on WLS. One? Two and one server on WLS1. Okay. So okay, uh, click, on, click on the deployments. You don't have to undeploy and redeploy. Click on the deployments. Okay. Click on the application. Go to the target. Why do you have two applications here? Because I was also trying to deploy this using the other okay. methods that we learned. Okay, okay. Yeah. So. Okay, but you know it's good. Okay. Anyways, uh, go to the targets. I can remove it if you want. No, that's fine. Okay. Go to the targets. Okay. Two and okay, four. And, uh, yeah. Whatever I said, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Save. Okay. Now, uh, now, uh, what will you do is in Apache configuration, yeah. instead of mentioning uh, WebLogic host for a single server, there is another tag called as WebLogic cluster for okay. uh, multiple servers. So mention WebLogic cluster okay. over there and mention all these three servers. So this entry I think is the same, right? 
So I only have to take this entry. Yeah, everything else is same. Only weblogic host changes to weblogic cluster. Okay. Okay. Now I think um, we are we are configuring the cluster now, right? Um, we are moving towards it, Ganesh, but we are not actually configuring the cluster. Okay. Okay. So, so can I ask my question now, or uh, what is it, Vignani? Okay. Um, yeah, we were on the screen actually uh, when I <laughs> I had to start writing down my questions. Okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, uh, my main question was about the processes because we have you know multiple domains on one machine and you know multiple servers with respect to each domain. So when I do ps minus ef and try to grab that process, is there a way I can specifically grab that for you know particular domain name? And you know yes. this MS2 is under this domain, or this admin server belongs to this domain. Yes, you can grab for two things. You know, if you have like you have MS1 on two different domains on the same Unix box, so when you grab for MS1, you will get two processes: one for domain MS1 on domain one, another MS1 on domain two, right? Okay. If that is the situation, then what you have to do is ps hyphen ef or xcf grab domain name and then pipe again and grab MS1. So you are grabbing for both, not only just MS1 but also the domain name. So it will give you only one process which is MS1 in one particular domain. Do you get the point Ganesh? Okay. okay. So, so what, what I'll do is I'll quickly write that command for you. Yeah, that will be great, yeah. Oh, on the board. Okay, okay. And, um, and the second question was, um, so you know, yeah, other day our administrator was, um, he was not happy, our, uh, uh, the admin guy, uh, mm -hmm. the Unix and Windows administrator. So when he looked at our machines, first of all our, at work, um, so this is what I want to suggest, when we do the things over here, we try to, we will try to, you know, make it as professional as possible, like using the folder names, using the paths that we, you know, want to use it at work. So we'll try to make it that way. For example, the admin guy, he was not happy and uh, our web logic was installed using the root user. So that was the first biggest mistake. Uh, second thing, some of the folders those were used, they were not from the slash data folder. So he said, you know, you, you should not use the root account and then the, the whatever you want to, you know, log or any of your related folder, they should always go under slash data. So if you can explain that folder, you know, structure on the professional machine, like, so we can suggest this folder structure to our companies that this is how Oracle suggests us and we should do it. Uh, with respect to his first concern that uh, WebLogic is installed with root user, we have already covered that uh, Ganesh uh, in the very beginning and I and and that is why uh, you know uh, we went ahead with uh, Oracle user on uh, a Linux machine that Amir has, and not with root user. Okay, because if you install the logic with root user, any other user who does not have root privileges will not be able to start the web logic server, and he'll face n number of challenges. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and that was the that was the problem actually. Uh, so this is I joined this company. I told you right, a couple of weeks now, one month. Right. So this has been going on there for ages, but they are now trying to you know make it more secure and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, with respect to the uh, structure, uh, um, our directory structure. See, uh, you can have it as per your wish. The best thing is not to use TMP temp basically because the temp is you uh, usually has some amount of memory for virtual uh, disk caching and stuff like that. So apart from temp you can use any drive which has good amount of space. Uh, you can uh, just create something like app slash uh, web logic slash or you know app slash middleware slash something. Some directory structure and uh, you can install web logic inside that. You can have a separate drive created by the Unix SA for your logs file. So slash var slash logs 
or slash where slash opt slash logs something like that and you can direct all the weblogic server logs apache logs to be going in that particular directory you can give the path so this is the only couple of uh, you know points that you need to bear in mind when um, uh, installing weblogic server creating configuring in weblogic server and the logs apart from that i think you should be good okay have i have uh, finished making the changes this uh, want to have them reviewed with you this is the wls1 server and the ms you know, sorry, uh, uh, this is the port for ms just just, just just speak out the managed server name that will make more okay this is ms1 this is ms1 yes, yes. this this okay. is ms4 and this okay. is m this is ms2 and same thing here okay 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 that's good did you restart your mm, apache after you made the changes not yet you will have to okay let me just open the you will have to now after you restart apache um, mm. i would want you to uh, tail for the out file of all the three servers here in okay. three different sessions Okay. and then we'll try to hit the application and we'll see which server gets the request okay ms2 log Yeah, that's fine. And the third one is here because uh... no, listen, listen, listen. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Go to WLS one. Open okay. a new session. Okay. Open another session. There are two, right? Open the third one. Okay. Okay. Bring it down. Yeah. Now SSH to WLS one. SSH to WLS two dot com. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. It's, it's shut down. Why was it shut down? So that SSH command you actually logged into WLS2 server from that another server and now you're seeing all the logs. Okay. Yes, yeah. Because one server is on another machine, the two servers are on another machine. These are the three servers. So if you want to see the logs of all the three servers, you have to go to one server for one log, one server manage servers logs, and for the other two you have to go on to the other server. So what we did is uh, we opened three sessions in two, uh, two managed server logs we are able to see on that machine. For the third one, rather than going on the other server, we simply SSH on the same server and jump onto the other server and saw the uh, third log on the same, uh, you know, okay. Uh, okay. on the same server, yeah. Um, this outfall is, is very old, it's from, I don't know, a week and a half ago. M MS4 is running. No, so you do one. Shut, shut it down and start it again. Are you sure it's running? Oh well, it, uh, the console is showing it's running. Uh, do one thing. Shut it. Shut it down. Delete the out file. Okay. So should I activate the changes yet or no? Because we made some. Yes. Change. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can activate the changes. Okay. Okay. Mm. I don't know where, where the out files are, right? So just kill the process, yes. And uh, de delete the out file. Okay. You would have aliases, right? Don't you? Yeah, I do. 
move, move into the log file folder, delete the out file. And are you sure uh, that is the location we are generating the out file for this guy? Yeah. Okay. No, if that is the case, it should have been updated. I don't know why. It did not, but anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know. Let's. Okay. Anyway, you can you can start this out. Okay. Okay. Let me start. What? Why did you move out a couple of? Uh, I I may not have the right alias for this. Uh, MS4. Yeah, I do have the CD and everything. I don't know. So I thought maybe I don't have the right alias for this uh, server. Yeah, I mean, um, you just MS4. fix whatever needs to be fixed. Yeah, okay. And, uh, I still don't see the log file over here. So, this, um, okay, well, anyway, anyway, uh, we, are, we are progressing here. towards configuring the cluster, right? Come again. Hello. Come again. Hello. Yes, yes. Ganesh. You, you, okay, okay. Please. Okay. So uh, we are we are progressing towards configuring the cluster, right? Uh, not yet. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah we, we're close. I mean, to uh, if one. you um, if you could say that what. What is the right now? What process that we are going through, and uh, you know, what is this stage? So yeah, we, we, uh, we, we, I, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. First, just pay attention to what we are doing. Then I'll explain okay. you why and what happened and what we were actually trying to do. Okay, that's all right. Okay, uh, yeah. Now that you have all, all the three, yeah. Now that you have all the three open, uh, I would want you to uh, hit the application from a browser and see which server gets the hit. Okay, did we? Uh, it's this one, MS4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, MS4 got the head. Yeah. MS4 got the head. Okay, now yeah. open. Probably in another system, open uh, open another uh, browser session and hit the application again. Okay, this time it was MS2. This time, open a third session. You know, maybe from your Windows. If you your Windows got connectivity, if not, then un, a fresh browser, basically a okay, fresh then. browser, not a tab, not a tab, a fresh browser. Okay. And hit the application again. Yeah, MS4 again. Okay, open a fresh. Okay, so, okay, open a fresh browser on some other system. Yeah. Do you do you also have WLS3? I do. Uh, I can start it up. I can start it up. Okay. Okay. Can you? Did you try for the fourth time? Yeah, I did. Okay. What's it, the result? It, Who got I, the I think it went back to WRS, I mean MS2. Yes. Okay. So open the new uh, WLS3. Now, uh, before you uh, open the browser on WLS3 and hit. Mm -hmm. Make a wild guess. Which server would get the request? It should go here, I guess, on uh, MS1. All right. So, is there some kind of binding happening in the background? Why is it not sending it to MS1 for whatever reason? Why, Looks why? like it's a round robin. Something like round robin. It goes cycles through each server. Okay. Okay. Before before we speak, you know. Uh, it's best to do the test and then uh, try to draw signs behind it. But um, let's first do these tests.
Yeah, no, it's MS1. Okay. So, guys, does this mean that when Amir hits Google, I'm sorry, gmail.com, it goes to MS1 server, which has Gmail application. When Ganesh hits gmail.com, it goes to MS2 server. And when I hit uh, gmail.com, it goes to MS4 server. And when Amir clicks on compose, it goes to MS1 server because that's the first server that served this request. So it knows that this guy is the same guy who's trying to reach out to me. And when Ganesh hits on compose or check mail or whatever, any other request, it'll go to MS2. And any number of requests from me would go to uh, MS4. And if a fourth guy comes in, like if you switch on WLS4, it will send back to MS1. So do, do, do you get the point? So does that sound round robin basically? B round robin in a sense, every new individual IP, JVM ID, who hits the application will be directed to the uh, next WebLogic server in a round robin fashion. Point number one. Point number two. For a particular user, for a particular JVM ID who has already hit the application, for any subsequent request from the same person, from the same browser, from the same session basically, uh, goes to the same server which initially serviced this particular guy's request. Does that make sense? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it keeps track of IP address looks like. Yeah, basically not the IP address but the JVM ID, yes. And uh, Yes, you're right. Because in a way it helps in the performance because if you click, if you go to gmail.com, you click on compose, you write an email, you click on send. For every click, if it goes to a different server, you will find a performance glitch, you know, a, a slowness in the performance basically. Uh, so it's best practice for all the requests from a particular user to be serviced by a single server. But if a new user comes in with, on a new system altogether, then the round robin algorithm will kick in. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, I, I don't understand uh, when you said JVM ID. Uh, I mean, the, I understand JVM like like the verbose or JVM Java output uh, window, all that log, whatever it creates. It's for the application, not for each and every user. It usually not for the user. So I don't understand the concept of like Ganesh logs in and he gets one JVM ID, Mahatashi logs in and he gets another JVM ID. I don't understand that concept. Okay, uh, you, uh, I mean, you guys are uh, um, uh, are coming from the past. When I say coming from the past, basically, like 15 years back, you've been using internet, yes? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So uh, you guys would have noticed earlier when you used to use Firefox or IE browser, it would often complain please install Java runtime. Do you remember that? Yes, yes. Amit? Yeah, I remember that. Yes. So what is that Java runtime and why does the browser need, need it? So the answer to that is your browser uses Java basically. Okay? And that is why when Java came up it was the most strongest language basically. Every browser uses Java runtime. Does that make sense? Even right. Microsoft is, com is against Java, right? It's completely botnet or it yeah. is completely C, C++. Yes. But uh, when uh, Microsoft launched the Internet Explorer browser, they were compelled to use Java runtime. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Internet Explorer browser also needs a Java runtime. So when you launch a browser, you are actually firing the Java command. You are initiating a JVM basically, a JVM process. So this uh, uh, browser when you hit a website, every JVM has a unique JVM ID by which you can recognize that particular JVM. So that is how the, uh, uh, here the situation was. For your second hit, it took you to the same server. How? Because it recorded the JVM ID from which the request came. When you hit, when you click on, okay, do one thing. Uh, uh, for MS2, uh, bring up MS2 uh, console, yes, you show that. Now, which which browser, uh, Amir, uh, uh, logged the index.jsp over here? Which browser? Was it WLS1's browser, WLS2's browser, WLS3's browser? Uh, 
WLS2. Okay. So in WLS2, just click on login. So this is a new request. All right. right. You you have hit Gmail and now you give the username and password login in. Yeah. Okay. Click click to add numbers. See, it's showing something C. here. See, see. So how did it know that that browser is being currently processed by MS2? Because right. it has the JVM ID of that browser, and that is why every request from that browser will only come to this uh, server. So if I start, uh, if I start another instance of the browser, like a completely brand new instance. Will it create a new JVM ID or for the JVM ID is one for one machine? See, it depends on the browser settings basically. So right now, we, we I think we saw that it does not open a new JVM ID. So, uh, but, but you, you know, I think you can you can make some changes in the brow browser settings basically too. Uh, okay, okay. To but the now concept is clear. So somehow, when you send the request to the website. It also sends your the user's JVM ID to the exactly, okay, exactly. and that is that has been used. So if you somehow block from your browser, if you somehow block your sending your JVM ID to the calling application, it will not be able to track what's going on. Yes, but you know you you don't have much privilege on that. But I don't know, I don't know. Okay, right. right. Okay, so, and, and, uh, so this is what exactly you said. What we were doing is. Uh, you configured httpd.conf file and that's when you put in all the four different servers as a cluster server and then that that configuration told Apache server like I had to keep doing the round robin through these servers and then drag the JVM ID to pass it on the same request. Yeah, probably, the, yeah, yes, this is something in the JVM ID and this is, uh, uh, th 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 this is, uh, see, Currently, we don't have a cluster, right, uh, configured on the WebLogic front. So this is definitely in the plugin, basically. So the plugin knows that whichever server I'm been given to, the default algorithm that I got to use is round robin. Yes. Okay. Okay. And at now, this time, at this time, do we have to care about hitting Apache because Apache came in on the port number 80, and if we keep on hitting WebLogic server directly with 7000, whatever the port we configured to. Uh, will it make a difference? Yeah, if you if so, round robin will not happen. If you're hitting the WebLogic server directly, then the concept of Apache and the plugin with Apache does not come into picture. So the round robin algorithm that is a part of the plugin does not come into picture. That's the whole point. Okay, okay. So we have to be careful that we when we call this um, session test, we have to be careful that calling this session test not. Not with our previous settings where we were directly calling WebLogic server. Now we have to call it through Apache, which is yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so so you know this is more. It's like your hardware load balancer. You know, like it's it's load balancing amongst the three servers, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, it is. It, it divided all the requests uh, you know, to different servers. Uh, but I see. Uh, if you go back to your browser, Amir. Um, are you calling your, um, uh, every time you are calling the same URL, right, from uh, the port 80? What port 80? I'm not specifying any port. Right, right. That means it defaulted to port 80. Port 80, yes. So he's yes. basically hitting Apache. Right, right. And Apache, uh, and Apache doesn't have the session test application, right? No, it doesn't. Right, right. It doesn't, yeah. So it, it it is forwarding the request to WebLogic in a round robin fashion. WebLogic is processing, uses its own memory and the CPU, doing the processing, sending the result back to Apache, and Apache is sending back the result to your browser, which is the client. Okay, okay. So I believe there will be further more complications that we don't have to worry about, but it could happen that we only have Apache with one server, and on the back end, there is one WebLogic serving, serving one application, there is another IIS serving Windows application, and then the Apache will need to know where this, how this request is path flows or. Uh, I didn't get your question. Uh, so right now Apache knew, um, I think it's because of the URL. Apache knows that this is the URL that the user called, and I need to send this, forward this request to WebLogic server. 
if there was yeah because because listen listen wls1.com hits apache do you agree yeah yeah okay now then it says slash session test so in the stgpd.com file amir has mentioned session test right okay so it goes in that if module where session test is mentioned and okay. in in that if module the list of the ip and port number of the weblogic managed servers are given that is how it comes to know that these are the managed servers i need to do the round robin or load balancing between okay okay got it okay okay so uh, we'll proceed uh, from here what we'll do is uh, i will need to share my screen So this is still not clustering. We we looked at this concept. We looked at load balancing, like how the request will be put into the round robins. I didn't get you. Uh, this is this was not related to clustering. This was related no. to the uh, load right. balancing. How Apache yeah. does the load balancing? Yeah. See, uh, uh, one of the uh, major uh, con confusion or misunderstanding that people hold despite working for years in this domain is they uh, do not understand the difference between two things one is failover and one is load balancing can you guys tell me the difference between failover and a load balancing yeah load balancing is your 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 round robbing through your servers to keep the you know equal load on all the servers. That's one. And failover is completely you have a disaster recovery system sitting you know on the other side. So you are switching to the parallel system, redundant system. Uh, no. Uh, I, I understand you're trying to come close to what it is, but uh, it's it's not. The uh, you know disaster recovery is nothing though with failover. What you are talking about is basically an operating system failover, but that is not what we are talking about. But anyway, let me give you a good idea about the differences between load balancing and failover. Yeah. Now, uh, just now, a, uh, load balancing, B A L A N C I N G. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I mean, we just want to be um, readable because this is getting recorded and. Yeah. So, uh, point number one, um, right now, Amir, if you can share your screen. Okay. Now, uh, uh, for MS2, which browser were you in? You, you, you were about to enter 2 plus something plus something right yeah Show me that browser yeah it's here click here to add numbers just click there okay now shut down ms2 ms2 okay Okay, now on the browser go and add two numbers. On the same browser go and add the two numbers. Okay, so you did not get a result, okay? Yep. Now I have, I have a question here. Is load balancing happening between the three servers, yes or no? It is happening, but failover is not. Exactly. Load balancing is happening, but failover is not. If failover would happen, then you would not get this error, but some other server will we'll jump in to process the request. Even yeah. if the primary server, which was servicing your request, went down, the other server would take its part. That's right. So now you understand the difference between failover and load balancing. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then it will carry you in, carry on with the session. It will keep the user session everything the same. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now, uh, the other point um, uh, that I want to make uh, you understand is, you uh, do you require a cluster for load balancing? 
The answer is no. You don't require a cluster for load balancing. Right now, have you created any clusters in WebLogic? See on the left hand side, you've got those clusters, right? Have you configured any clusters in <coughs> no, no. WebLogic? No clusters. But are you able to do load balancing? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm Apache. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So now we understand that cluster is required for failover and not for load balancing. Remember that. Okay. So many people, you know, when you ask them in an interview or something, uh, why do you want to use the cluster? They say the cluster is used for load balancing. That is not correct. Right. The whole purpose of a web logic cluster is basically for failover and not for load balancing. It's availability. It's availability. Okay, okay. So I hope now you understood the difference between them. Now we're going to create a cluster. So can I just keep the name same? Yeah, your wish. Okay, and uh, unicast, multicast, default. Uh, yeah, just keep everything default. Okay. And put these three servers only in the cluster. Okay, targets. And where do I put this okay, servers? MS1. Sorry. Okay, so I have to shut, it, shut them down, I guess. Uh, yes, you will have to shut down the managed server and do one thing before you shut down the managed server. Yeah. Also undeploy the application, both the applications. Okay. But I can do them, I do that in any, any sequence, right? I don't have to. Uh, or should I? Yes. No, your wish, whatever. Yeah, okay. I mean for undeployment you have to shut down the servers, that's the first thing you do, right? No, no. No. For undeployment, why do you have to shut down the servers? You don't. You don't have to shut down the servers to do undeployment. No. To delete your application. No. No. Okay. <coughs> and MS4 is running here. So, so you can keep the servers on running, and you can go in the deployment and delete the application without shutting down the servers. Yes. Then why did he shut down them right now? Uh, he shut it down for the cluster. The, you cannot create a cluster while the servers are running. Okay. Okay, all three are down. So let's go back here. Servers. MS1. MS2. <coughs> MS4. Okay. Activate changes? Yes, please. Okay. And remove the deployment from all of them? Yes. Okay. And I have emailed you a new application. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Are you changing the targets or are you undeploying it? Uh, okay. I have to undeploy. Okay. Yeah, just undeploy. Lock and edit. Undeploy and then delete it. Yeah. I mean, stop it and then delete it. Basically, that's the end of the problem. You have to force stop now, both of them. Okay, I'll just force stop. Force stop now. Yeah. Also, you have to stop stop that stop the deployment first before you delete it. So, if you shut yes. down the if you shut down the servers, will that stop the deployment automatically? Yes. Okay. Oh wait, wait, wait. But he already shut down the servers, right? Yes. Then why uh, we we just uh, no, no he, sure. he started started them back. Oh, okay. okay. No, I haven't. I haven't. But the thing is, uh, these what are these running? These, MSC is running. Yeah, but MSC is not part of the cluster, and I, I haven't yeah, deployed no, anything. No, 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 hold. No. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Amir, can you show me the servers? 
they shut down this cluster. Okay. okay. What about MS4? Are you sure it's shut down? Yeah, because I killed the process because this is there's no node manager running, so it doesn't know the state. Okay, 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 yeah. okay. So maybe how do you refresh Tamir? Uh, it, it it wouldn't show active. It was showing active, right? Yeah, but the deployments are so, gone already. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So uh, now you can lock in a ditch. Okay. So I just take it as a, it's best practice when you are undeploying or deleting your application, you stop it first. Doesn't matter your servers are running or not, right? No, uh, Ganesh, it's compulsory for you to stop the application before undeploying it. It will not allow you to undeploy while it is running or, or while it is active. Okay? Hold on, hold on. Amir, Amir, just wait. Just wait for a moment. Okay. Ganesh, uh, okay. did you get the point? Okay, okay. Um, yes. I mean, uh, all, all I did is uh, I remember at work, uh, you know, I had to... I had to uh, undeploy my application, so I shut down all the managed servers first, and then I came to no. and I deleted. No, I no, you don't have stuff. to do. No, listen, the managed server need not be shut down for the deployments to take place. But if you do that, it's uh, it's always a better. Uh, you know, it will give you. It will never give you any issues, basically. Okay. Starting a JVM, right? Okay. Okay. But but it's not required. Uh, Amit, did you download the email that I sent you? Oh no. You sent to uh, I Gmail? sent you a new email. Email yes. And Gmail. Both to Gmail and both both of them. Gmail or and Yahoo. Okay. All right. I want you to open the application uh, in a zip file and show me the web logic dot XML. Okay. So web logic dot XML is the application like a web dot XML because we have config dot XML. That's where our uh, server uh, and domain configuration and many yeah, server names. Li li listen, listen, yeah. The config.xml is basically a representation of your web logic domain. Right. All the configuration, whatever it has. Right. The web.xml is basically a representation of your application level settings. Like what do you want your welcome page, how much session time, what do you want for your application. Any setting at the application layer, application level is 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 uh, in the web.xml the weblogic.xml is at the server level you know so basically any server level settings that you want to re, you know specify you need uh, weblogic.xml so did you understand the difference between the three xml files so so the memory is that called server level setting uh, memory uh, the start of memory and uh, uh, other day we configure a few other types of memory. Uh, is that called server level setting? Uh, no, that that would come under domain level configuration. Okay, the the weblogic.xml basically uh, uh, will uh, have more to do with the runtime uh, uh, values and not the uh, uh, you know prior to runtime uh, configuration changes. So. Uh, 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 memory argument changes before the server starts, right? Mm -hmm. So it will go in the config.xml uh, for the domain settings and not in the server settings. Understood, understood. Because, because you are dealing with starting one particular domain and their admin server and their managed server. So mm, right. it relates to the same right. standard and argument. It, yeah, and weblogic.xml will have to do with runtime values of the server, which can be changed while the server are running. You cannot change the heap while the servers are running, right? Right. So the heap will go in the configuration settings while as like session timeout. You can change that while the server is running. Uh -huh. Make sense? Right. right. Okay. Uh, Amir, open the web uh, session test dot war. Yeah, I did. And this is the uh, build dot XML. My friend, session test dot war. Okay, war. All right. Okay, here we are. Okay, open webinf weblogic.xml. Yeah, here it is. Okay, good. You'll have to deploy this war file. Okay. You can deploy it as an application, oh, oh, oh. as a folder. Can, can, can you can keep it open? I mean, uh, let's, let's discuss what is in it. So it has, uh, it has description, persistent store, um, I don't know any of the, like, it's only has four lines and, uh, 
don't know what what settings it has. Right. So it it says uh, that uh, store the sessions uh, in in the memory basically, right? So this tag will enable uh, session replication. Uh, and why do you need session replication in order to achieve failover? Because you want the user session to be retained, even if the server goes down. Does that uh -huh. make sense? Yes. So, so you'll have to specify that parameter in your WebLogic.xml, and that's what we are doing now. Understood. Okay. So, deploy the session test as a WAR file or as an application, whatever you feel like. So the so the existing session test WAR you gave us, it doesn't have this setting. No, it doesn't. Okay, okay. So you purposely made it different. Yes, with, so we as we yes, progress through, we can see the difference. With, uh, with yeah, with, yes. With this setting, this application, if you try to deploy it on Manage Server One, it will not get deployed. It it will say, "Give me a cluster only, then I'll get deployed," because I have session replication feature in me. So get me on a cluster. Don't get me on a single Manage Server. Okay, okay, okay. So it has that inbuilt check that this is specially meant for cluster. Yes. For the failover. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, here we are. This is the application and uh, the war. Okay. Yes, deployed no. on all the three servers. All the servers or the, the cluster? Yeah, the cluster. So. Rather than selecting uh, the servers individually, you can simply select the cluster. And whatever you have done, all the deployment classes, everywhere, wherever you find the managed server name, you can change the managed server name with the cluster name. And instead of getting deployed on the managed servers or servers, it will get deployed on all the servers in the cluster. Does that make sense? Now, uh, Ganesh has uh, a script that does the deployment on the cluster. And, uh, Ganesh, we showed you WLST script for deploying applications. We showed you uh, Ant build script for deploying. We showed you WebLogic.deploy tool. So what you have to do is Ganesh change. We did it for a single server, right? Managed server, or two managed servers. Change that to a cluster and see if it gets deployed to a cluster. Okay, that that happens to be your assignment. Right, right, right. I mean, uh, we have been already doing it at work. It's a Python script. That has the parameter. No, but, but listen, uh, listen. I need a Python script that deploys to your environment. Sure, sure, sure. And that to to a cluster, yes. Yes, yes. I get that. Yeah. <coughs> Excellent. So okay. The application is deployed on the cluster. Okay, ju just check the deployments and if you see the application is not active. Select and start the application. Is Select it be the application? Okay, is it not all not because uh, everything is down or I mean all the servers? Oh, oh, all the servers are down. Yeah. Okay, you have to bring them up, please. Okay. Bring all the servers up. So if servers were down, will it complain that I cannot deploy or anything, any errors like that? No. It will when still you, show. Yeah, my friend, what is deployment that you're doing on the WebLogic console? It is nothing but modifying the config.xml file. So why will it complain whether servers are up or not? Uh, when but the when, servers it, are when up it has to the show the status as active, the server has to be on, right? Yes. But it will not stop you from deploying, right? Why would it right, stop right. you from deploying? Right. Because this deployment that you're doing is nothing but simply modifying an XML file. So whether your okay. server is running or not, who stops you from modifying an XML file? Okay. I mean, just think logically. Okay. Right, right. Okay, I see some changes in the like new messages in the log file. It's uh, waiting for synchronization with the other members of the cluster. Right, right. Yeah. This is where it, 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 yeah. Now I'll, I'll explain you the logic yeah. behind how clusters work. 
but let's do a uh, small assignment before that. Okay. Uh, so last so time, uh, last just time. This is again. Um, so we have now cluster, and we have this four or three servers configured in cluster. So when we deploy this application, depending on deployment type we learned yesterday, uh, staged or no staged or uh, uh, what was the third thing? External stage. External, yeah, external. So when we deploy now, and if it is, for example, stage, then it has to travel through the wire and get it deployed on each and every server. Yes. Okay. So okay. that web logic will do that, like transferring all these files to all the managed servers and. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that's where the problem is. If you have a application and has to be deployed in twelve different servers, you better have some utility or in. Uh, you know, taken care of that before web logic try to do it. Uh, you know, from one server. Huh? I didn't get that. I mean, to improve the speed, like as you said yesterday, your deployment file could be, you know, large enough. In External case, deployment it, is the solution. Right. Yeah. External mode of deployment, yes. Uh, okay. So n now we have got the application active. Now what I want Amir to do is uh, just do the uh, bring up all the three sessions, okay? The uh, sessions, as in uh, the the, listen, listen, listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Amit, oh, hold on. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, br br bring bring up the terminals for the out file for all the three servers which are part of the cluster. Yeah, they're here. Are all of them running? Can you show us? Yes. Oh, now, should, I, no, should I restart the tail because these are from the older? Yes. Okay. Yes, please, please. Okay. Okay. Now uh, log into one of the servers through the browser. Yeah, just log into the application. Hit the application, log into the application. Yeah, I did that. It went on to which server did the request go? Uh, same as before is MS4. Okay, show me MS4 got the request. Can you show me? Just just move your mouse around it, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, okay. Now uh, log in. Log into the application. Okay, this is also going to the same MS4. My friend, my friend, I said log into the application. Did you hear me? Okay. You you woke up early today. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, lo log into the application. Nice. Close all the other browsers, man. Close. I just need a single browser with a single session. Don't mess things up. Just keep it very simple, very straight. Did you log in? Click on login. Hold on. Let me just restart now. Uh, Amit, can you just pull down this uh, MS4 session window a little bit down, please, further down? A little bit, okay? Yeah. MS4 terminal, just pull it a little more down so that we can. I cannot see MS2 logs. That's my problem. So you want to see MS2 four uh, log or MS2 uh, log? I want to see four windows, three sessions and one browser. Okay. All four arranged, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I have limited space, so this is all I can. This is no, MS2. No man, you you can you can reduce the size of them, right? Okay. Reduce the size of them. Yes. Yes. MS2 as well. That's more like it. Yes. Now login. Click on login. I did, and I'm getting some error message now. I don't see anything. Just validate. Oh, is is that server down or something? Can you check? 
I started all of them. No, they're all running. Okay, why did you get the error? What is the error about? It's 404 not found. Can you open session session test dot work? I'm sorry, session session test dot work. What do you yes, mean? What, what do you mean? The application that you deployed, open it and see if you have validate servlet in it. Okay. And um, and yeah. because we had the previous yeah I do previous, see it, we, yeah. had the, we had the previous okay. deployment we had the previous deployment did we uh, did we do something to undeploy it or uh, is it like two two active applications no 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 time? no Ganesh no I, I you saw that I removed everything I deleted all the previous deployments and I just did a fresh yeah. deployment so close close the browser and start again please close the browser and do it again. Okay, this time it hit this uh, WLS2. That's fine. Just log yeah. in, please. Yeah. Click goodness. on login button. I did. Then we get the same error message. Is there anything matching the request you are writing? The is going off whether the condition is temporary. Okay, how do I open check the, the how do I check open the, uh, the open open okay wait 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 give me five minutes okay, okay. let me check the application at my Motashi Motashi it looks like the request is not reaching to WebLogic yet because it's just coming from Apache. Okay. Uh, okay, I understood the problem. Uh, Okay, Amir. Yeah. The I send you a zip file, right? Yeah. The zip file had the web INF directory as well as the WAR file, right? Yeah. Okay. Here's what you what you sent me. It has the WAR file and the build file, and the WAR file inside it has everything that we need for the wall like WebINF has this stuff and, and here's the validate server class so I just uh, un I just like I just took this uh, war file out and I Deployed the war file. Okay. Yeah. Just I, give me a moment. Yeah. I mean, while he's looking at the other stuff, can you try restarting Apache server itself and see if that error goes away? It's nothing to do with Apache. We didn't touch Apache at all during all this process. 
Right, right. But that error message saying that 403 is from Apache, it's not from WebLogic, right? It's because uh, something wrong with the configuration of the application, not Apache. Validate submit. Validate submit should be called. Does it say 403 or 404? 404. Okay, uh, do one thing. Undeploy this application. Undeploy the application, close the browser and then undeploy. Close all the uh, browsers that are hitting the application, undeploy the application. And I said first you need to stop and then delete. Ahmed, not the managed servers, not the managed servers. I told you to stop the application and then delete the application. Okay, all right. Okay, it's gone. Okay. Uh, you would be having the session test application that was working fine, right? Yeah. For the earlier one? Yeah, I have it. Okay. Yeah. I will just share the tag in uh, the word word pad and just add that tag to the weblogic.xml and deploy the old application which was working fine. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, I'll have to build. I'll, I will have to build the word file right again. You can deploy it as a folder, my friend. Nobody can. St I told you, right? Can't okay. you deploy it as a folder? Is my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, I can do that. Yeah. So yeah. So jar minus xpf. This is how I will unzip, right? Yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> First ls and see what you got. Oh, I should have created another directory and then. Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. My friend, give that. Okay, not an issue. Go ahead. Okay, so this is what I have, and I will go web by enough, and I have to change this one, right? Yes. Okay, so what's the tag that I have to put? You you have that in the word word document. Actually, get it from the get it from the work the application that was not working. Uh, word document may have some some white space characters that we don't know. No, that's fine. That's fine. It's okay. okay. Just uh, from session descriptor, 
to slash session descriptor. Copy those three lines. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's it. That's it. Okay. Save and deploy the application. Let me see if I can. Uh, it's in. Hold on. U01. Why I don't see it here? The folder. Under and the, under and the top. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Activate the changes. Yep. And just see if the application is active. Okay. okay. Now try to hit the application, please. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Click here to add numbers, but don't add any number. Just click there. Yes. Now this means that the request is going to MS4. Uh, MS4. Okay. Now shut down MS4 from the browser. From the browser. Yes. Only MS4. Okay. Okay. So ideally we should get page 404 or you know that error that we got. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You, I, I asked you to listen. 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 I am listening. Shut it down from, shut it down from the browser. But there's no web logic. There's no node. There's no node manager friend, running. My my friend, I understand that the okay. node manager only plays a role for starting up. For shutdown, it will anyways work. Yes. You can go back to that putty session and check. Go to the putty session here, the WLS one. Does it say, say shut down? No, not here, my friend, not here. Yeah. The same window where we were doing our test with the, all the three windows open. Yes, yeah, it says shut down. It says shut down, right? You are happy. Hmm? Yeah. yeah and, and, and you are sure that the application. Now enter two numbers. Yeah, so I must. Uh one took over the exactly it just did not just took over the request but it took over your session as session well, as well. Yeah. which means yes because it means ms1 remembers your username and password which was verified by ms4 yeah your u3 validates so late which verified your username and password so ms1 even remembers that nice so so with this we can see that no matter how much your servers go down, the end user will never feel that the server went down. He will not even come to know that the server which was initially processing my request has, is, is, uh, is powered off. He will not even come to know. Right. For him is a smooth application. Do you, do, do you okay? So this is a, 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 a more, more so a real time example sort of, you know? Yeah. or how a session session replication works okay now yeah. now give me the give me the control and now I'll explain you the science behind it yeah you are the presenter now yes Now this is MS1, this is MS2, this is MS3, I'm sorry MS4. Now 
Okay, so from the internet, people hit Apache and slash your your application context group. Then Apache chooses one of these servers as a primary server based on the round robin algorithm. So, for example, it chose MS one to be the primary server for Amir. Maybe you know Amir is hitting Gmail dot com. So, MS one in technical terms is called the primary server. Primary server for whom? For Amir. Remember that. Now, for Amir, MS1 is the primary server. Now, for example, Amir is doing shopping. He's buying five apples, and then he says buy twelve bananas, and then he goes and buy twelve oranges. Then he buys. Uh, pencils, then he buys something else. So he will see that the shopping website, the shopping cart, eBay or anything like that will keep doing a subtotal and will have an account of all the items that he has bought. If you guys have done online shopping, I'm not sure. But anyways, so or uh, if he logs into Gmail, so when he clicks on compose mail, on send email, on check email. Does it ask for the password every time? No. Why? Because whenever he clicks, it's a new request, but the username and password is remembered, stored by that particular server. So what the managed server does is, whatever activity the user is doing, it will persist that particular information, be it buying fruits, vegetables for online shop shopping, or be it the username and password uh, you know, for an account for which he is logging in and doing a number of activities, or be it any activity where he is, you know, persisting the session basically. So, what MS1 will do is when Amir logged in to this server, this server became the primary server. So, what it will do is it will store the username and password for whatever Amir gave in a session in the memory, in the RAM of this server. So I said all the logic goes here. This only does redirection. Apache only does redirection. But wait, MS1, before it wants to persist the username, password, you know, whatever sessions while buying for an online card, or whatever sessions that MS1 wants to persist, before it could persist, it will make a copy, it will choose one of these two servers, MS2 and MS4 as the secondary server. So for example, MS1 chose MS4 to be the primary server, sorry secondary server. So Amir will not come to know, but MS4 has been chosen as the secondary server for Amir, okay? And what it will do is, before, I'm saying before, remember that, before the session is created and persisted on MS1, a copy of the session will be created and persisted on MS2 for Amir. After this is done, then the session 
will be created on MS-1. So first the session will be created and persisted on MS, the secondary server. So and then the secondary server will send an acknowledgement to MS-1. Hey, I have the uh, session with all the value of the user, uh, his username and password, if he's bought any bananas, apples or whatever, you know, all, any information. So it will give an acknowledgement. Once the acknowledgement is received, MS-1, which is the primary server, will then persist the session for Amir and then send the page back to him saying, hey, six bananas have been added to the cart. So when he clicks add six bananas and he sees that the six bananas have been added to the shopping cart or he gives a username and password and he sees that he's able to log in. Before that, the username and password, the six bananas, was stored in a session, taken over to the secondary server, got an acknowledgement saying that the session has been persisted. Then another session, the same same session got created over here on the primary server, and then it actually showed the login page or uh, the uh, uh, shopping cart list with the updated, you know, stuff that he has bought. So this is the concept. So what will happen is, if MS1 for some reason goes down, even if MS1 goes down, okay, uh, MS4 which is the secondary server has the current session of the user with all the values with it. So uh, what Apache does is, Apache has a cookie, okay, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it should be black in color. Yeah. The Apache has a cookie which is exchange, exchange between the cluster. So actually, you know, superficially these guys are now part of a cluster. So this cookie will, for each particular JVM ID coming from the internet, it will have a list of the primary and the secondary server for that JVM ID. So when the server goes down, Apache will try to contact the server, but this server has been shut down, right? Because of any reason, it broke down, it shut down or whatever. So after a small interval of time, when Apache will not be able to reach this server, automatically it will see which is the secondary server and the cookie it will find the secondary server is MS4. So it will redirect this particular user, Amir, to MS4 where his session will already be present and that is how it was able to do 5 plus 5 equal to 10 without asking for the username and password again. Did wait, you guys wait, wait, understand? Wait. wait. So we understood that Apache was doing load balancing. It was not doing failover. Failover was done by clustering. So we had this cluster of MS1 to MS4. So when before MS1 went down, it has persisted all its information, which was used by MS4 in case of failure. Now, Apache Apache did not listen, know. Listen, what listen, 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 listen. Uh, you have to repeat this statement, whatever you said. Okay. Because I, I I I didn't get you know, and just okay. be more more elaborate in in what you're trying to explain. Okay, okay. So step one was Apache is for we are considered Apache yeah, is a good balance. I, I I understood. I just just the last statement. Yes. Okay. Last statement was when MS one was operative, its information related to session and what the user was doing that was what? persisted. That yes. Yeah. Listen, persisted. listen, 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 Ganesh. This information that you're talking about is for a single user. There can be 10,000 users on MS1. Mm -hmm. Each each will have its own session and yeah. not necessarily for each of these users the secondary server will be MS4. No. Maybe I logged in and, and for me also MS1 becomes the primary. But for me as a second user for a different JVM ID, MS1 would want to choose MS2 as the secondary server. So the end user does not know about it, but yes, we can. We, we did see, you know, which was the primary and which was the secondary in the test. Yes. Okay. So okay. So as part of the clustering or as part of the failover logic, they already made their mind that I'm going to keep on duplicating my information, 
for different session, users. Session, session, session. Different session, 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 so session, session user different session. session. User sessions. User so sessions, yes. User session like um, Ganesh logs in, um, Mohatish logs in, or Amir logs in. So every session I will keep on duplicating it with some another another managed server so that in case of failover I can take over. Yes. Okay. And it in, can in, 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 hold on. Hold, in, in case of failover, the secondary server can take over and become the primary server. Yes. For, that, yes, for, 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 for that particular user, again, these ones are very important. Right, right. For that particular user, or uh, you know, basically MS1 goes down. So, if as many users or as many sessions that time they were active, uh, right. they respect you. They respect you. Redundant server will take this. Will take the yes. primary role. Yes. So if okay. If, okay. if if there were ten users on MS1, there could be six users, uh, which have the secondary server as MS4, because MS1 for six users chose MS4 as the secondary server. For four users, it chose MS2 as the secondary server. So when MS1 goes down, for those four users, MS2 will become the primary server, and for the six users, MS4 will become the primary user. Okay, okay. So okay. So now, now the next step. Now the next step is the failover mechanism was taken care. Of. Like he found the redundant information somewhere else in case of failure, and now it switched the gears from MS1 to MS4. No, uh, he he found. Uh, is not the correct um, term I want to use. I already told you about this cookie. This cookie has that information for this particular client, which is the primary and which is the secondary. Okay, okay, okay. So the cookie has the information, and cookie yes. will be updated with saying that now who is the primary and who is the secondary. Exactly, exactly. In case exactly. of error. So, yeah, exactly. So yes, exactly. So when MS1 goes down, this cookie will be updated saying now MS4 is the primary. First it said MS1 is the primary. Now it will say MS4 is the primary and MS4 before becoming primary will choose a secondary for this particular user, Amir. So of course there is only one server left. So what MS4 will do is it will choose yeah, it will choose MS2 As the secondary server, okay. Okay. And uh, it uh, and before uh, even going back to Amir on the browser, it will duplicate this Amir's cookie session, basically Amir's um, not cookie session uh, to MS2. So this session, which is Amir's session, will now be over here. This will become now become the secondary for Amir. And MS4 is the primary for Amir. Okay, I'm uh, asking a quick question for you. Where is this cookie stored? Is it on Apache or on the web browser somewhere? Or is it handled, uh, by, the, handled by the web, web logic server? Uh, uh, yeah, I think the cookie is with Apache. Okay. It is with Apache. Okay. okay. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll, you know, the, these things we have to uh, you know, get into when we are troubleshooting and we go into, you know, troubleshooting and performance for web logic servers when we get into these details. Basically. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. So, but anyway, so with this uh, said, I hope uh, you guys understood. Now, if the secondary goes down, for example, in the first situation when MS1 was the primary and MS4 was the secondary, if the secondary went down, so MS1 will try to send the session information to MS4 but will not receive an acknowledgement back because MS4 is down this time, the secondary server. So because it did not receive an acknowledgement, MS1 will decide to change the secondary and choose MS2 as a secondary. It will update Amir's session cookie over here, get an acknowledgement and then send a response back to Amir. Nice. So there is under no situation that the session will be lost. Got it. Okay, okay. So and it will keep on doing that as many, to as many servers those are available in that cluster. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, guys, now uh, the next topic that we need to cover is basically uh, uh, around. Okay. Now, now let let's let's uh, have Amir share his screen. Okay. Amir, please click on the cluster.
Okay, click on the cluster zero. See, the default algorithm is round robin, but you can change the algorithm. We'll, we will look at that. Okay. Okay, mm. it's here. Click. Yes, lock and edit. Go to the drop down. Okay, what is weight based? Round robin is basically um, uh, you under, you know round robin anyways, right? Yes. The first one, the second one, third one. Then again the first one, second one, then third one. Then again the first one, second. One. This is round robin. Weight I don't know based, the word affinity. I don't know the word affinity. Yeah, you you can you can leave that for now. But anyways, uh, uh, for weight based um, uh, algorithm. Uh, for example, you have MS1, MS2, and MS4, right? Yeah. Now, MS4 has 8 GB of heap and a very quadra, very high-end processor and a very good disk space. So, with respect to the hardware, it is 10 times superior than MS1 and MS2. Okay. Got the point? Yeah. So, what you will do is, instead of round robin you will want weight based and you will give weight 800 to MS4 and you will give weight only 100 to MS1 and MS2. So okay. out of the 10 requests, 8 requests will go to MS4 because, okay. because you have given it more weight. Okay. Okay. And and the reason you've given more weight is because it has a good hardware to support those many requests, versus uh, the two uh, low hardware servers that you have. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, random is basically any yes. random. Yeah, just pick yeah. random. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, uh, when you're creating a server, you found something called as a unicast and something called as a multicast. Multicast. Yeah. Yes. So, what is unicast and what is multicast? I'd like to explain you. Uh, please, uh, uh, let me share my screen. Okay. So, for that weight base, there is a way to add that weight in the server screen somewhere in the configuration. Yes. 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 We we, uh, we can look at all those options. Okay. But uh, for now, I'm just trying to explain you what is unicast and what is multicast. Okay. Now, I, I said, you know, when MS1 goes down, Apache will try to contact MS1 and if it doesn't, is not able to contact, it will go to MS4. But this doesn't happen this way. If this is what happens, then the user will find very slow response, right? If the server is down, this um, Apache will have to wait till a timeout period and then go to the other server. So what actually happens is, these servers using P3 protocol internally check each other's health status. Okay, so what they will do is MS1 will send a packet to MS2 and MS3, MS4 and say I am alive. So MS2 knows that MS1 is alive, MS4 knows MS1 is alive. Similarly, MS2 will do a broadcast, send a packet saying I am alive, I am alive. So MS1 knows MS2 is alive, MS4 also knows MS2 is alive. And these two will also send, so every server will send that I am alive packet to each, to every other server. And this is called multicast. And this is how the other server know that this server is in a good health or is in a bad health. <coughs> Can I, so if MS1 is not able to broadcast to other servers that I am healthy, these servers will not choose MS1 as the secondary server because the MS1 is not able to broadcast, which means there's some problem with the server, overloaded, shut down, crash, power off or whatever. And that is the reason why it is not able to send a broadcast to all the servers that I am alive. So automatically because they did not receive an acknowledgement from MS1, they did not receive a broadcast from MS1, they will understand that we should not choose MS1 as the secondary server. Got the point? And automatically yeah. the cookie would be updated. Yeah. So a, a multicast is basically where a packet is sent from one server to every other server in a cluster. And a unicast is basically MS1 will say I am alive and send the packet only to MS2. MS2 will attach its own packet 
saying MS1 is alive and I am also, MS2 is also alive and forward the packet to MS4. So when MS4 receives the packet, it sees that both MS1 and MS2 both are alive. It will attach its own packet saying MS4 is also alive and send it back to MS1. So MS1 will know that both MS2 and MS4 are alive. So a packet is sent to only the next server and to the next server and back, you know, in, in, in this fashion. And this is called unicast. So basically a multicast has more load on the network because there are so many packets that will be broadcasted. Now here there are just three servers, but if you have 10 servers in a cluster, then imagine the permutation, coming, how many packets would be sent across in a cluster, in a network. So uh, that is what the default is basically a unicast uh, algorithm. But anyways, you can work with the network team, team domain, which is better for you. But anyways, the board do the same thing, okay? But I just tried to explain you what it is. And this is how they keep a track of which server is in a good state, which server is in a bad state. Got it. There is some, there is something called as, uh, something called as a heartbeat in a cluster, uh, uh, which is uh, three seconds, for example. So in every three seconds, they will check each other's health by either unicast or multicast. You can increase this heartbeat to five seconds or you can decrease the heartbeat depending upon whatever you want, okay? So we usually do not touch a pedal unless and until there's a serious issue with the cluster. But uh, I, I, I told you that heartbeat, if you set it three seconds, that means every three seconds it will check whether your heart is beating or not, which means whether you are alive or not, whether which, which you are healthy or not, whether which means uh, you are able to take a request or not, which means we can we choose you as a primary or a secondary server, yes or no. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, if, uh, Amir, you can share back your screen. Okay, okay. And then that's why that on the console, we have that um, health monitor that says the number of servers active at a given time. Right. Okay, okay. That's how they found out. I, I have okay. another question that just... Messaging. Go to messaging. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, in 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 under under web logic on one machine, I have two domains, uh, Yahoo Apps and Google Apps. So Google Apps uh, Google Apps has its own config.xml that tells how many managed servers are there and what is their IP and port and admin server information is in the config.xml for Google Apps and there is a config.xml for Yahoo Apps, right? Okay. Yes. So, so now, at a large, uh, what will tell me that on my machine I have Yahoo Apps and I have Google Apps and I have uh, thirteen, maybe Amazon app? How can I? Where can I capture that? I have these three domains on my machine. Is there some XML website I can look at? Or uh, if you want to check, see. I will never be introduced to a Unix box and I will be asked to check how many domains are there. No. Uh, usually this is something that whoever introduces you to an environment would brief you about because you would have application documentation where it, it would be mentioned that we have this domain and we have these many servers in a domain. So, uh, you, you know, the sort of... Uh, question you're putting forward usually does not happen in real world. You know, if somebody does that, please uh, have me talk to him so that, you know, I can try to understand what's the science behind uh, discovering how many domains you have on a server. This is something the whole organization should know. And uh, anybody you ask would, should, should be able to tell you that there are three domains on your box. But again, if somebody gives me a challenge, I will do a Unix command search command and search for config.xml. I'll see how many config.xml's are there. I'll open each one of them and figure out how many domains. Okay. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. So, uh, uh, okay. So, click on advance. Yeah, can we try setting up a multicast uh, configuration just for the sake of knowledge? Yeah, yes, you can. But please uh, let me just be uh, done with uh, what I want to show you. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, come down. Okay, come up. 
you can guys uh, just read through it and you can put forward a question query that you have come up okay to, to the very top here. Okay, click on overload. Just just yeah, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to go through each of the options that we have here. Okay, come down. Okay, go up. Uh, click on uh, replication. <coughs> okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Come up. Can you click on clause cluster replication type? Yeah, you click on lock and edit and click on the drop down. Man van, okay. Okay, come down. Come down at the bottom. Advance. Okay, okay, just this one. Uh, uh, inter cluster. Yeah, the cluster link between two clusters. Go. Okay, this is between two clusters. Okay, you can ignore this. Mm, replication timeout. Yeah, the enable replication timeout. So when when the session is getting replicated from a primary, yeah, to the secondary server. So uh, if it is not able to replicate in due time, so uh, should the time, if you disable it, it will try forever to replicate I the see. session from one box to the other box. Okay. Yeah. And session flush interval, after this many uh, amount of time, um, the uh, application would, or all the session would be flushed to the secondary server or backup cluster. You, you See, what people do is they create two clusters. Like MS1, MS2, and MS4 are in, in one cluster. They will create another cluster and they will call it a backup cluster. And what you can do is you, after this, you know, here, what you, it is doing is basically it will push all these sessions to the backup clusters, okay, to all the server in the other cluster. So that if, if this cluster goes down, the other cluster can take over. Okay, but okay. Uh, you you don't need you need not dwell into it. Okay, that's fine. Move up. And you and you can have you can have same servers in the backup cluster, or they have to be different. Of course, they, they have to, they be, have different. to be different. Otherwise, what, what, what's what's the point? You know, yeah, yeah. because if if any of the servers are affected in the earlier, in the first cluster, automatically the, the second cluster got affected. Then what's the point of having a second cluster? Because they both are the same servers. Okay. Yeah, it's I mean, uh, the hardware cost hardware is very costly. So even you know, yeah, so I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying. You know, um, I have not seen any organization use multiple cluster replication. But anyways, I, if there, we just need to know what it is. So right. it all depends. You know how critical your application is. Uh, go to messaging. Uh, okay, this is in, oh, we already saw that, right? Uh, hold on, go up. You can change this to Unicast whenever you want. Okay, guys. Uh, one more thing. Um, these sessions, by default, where are they stored? That's the question. Please answer. Mm, no idea. Persistent in the XML file. No, not in the XML file. They are persisted in memory. Okay. In the RAM, by default. Okay, in, in, in the JVM, in the RAM, base, in the heap. Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so but you can also persist this session in a file, or you can persist this this session in a database also. Okay. Okay, so um, they they'll have both of them as assignments, but I will be with you guys while you're doing it. Not this time, but next weekend. Okay. 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 Now, uh, what is left for me around clusters are basically two things. I will please note them. Okay. We will try to we will try to cover them in the next class. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, we have time till 10, 10, 30, or even if we want to stretch until 11 o'clock, I'm okay. Uh, okay. But anyways, no, uh, uh, see guys, I understand how much would you guys be able to take in, and uh, there is a real emergency where I want you guys to be done with all the assignments, uh, especially Ganesh yourself, and be brushed right, up with everything, you know, because then I would have more refined queries coming forward, which would, uh, you know, uh, which would not have been answered before. So yes, I yes, want you, uh, yes, I want you to go through them, okay, and uh, be done with, uh, you see. The next, sure, anyways, sure. the next topic that we are doing is, it's called, uh, hold on, what is it called? Session. It's called session replication, I remember. So we are doing session replication in, uh, um, uh, se uh, uh, replication groups. It's called replication groups. Can you just make a note of it? Yeah, okay. So in the next class we are doing a replication group. What is replication group? I'm just giving you an idea, small idea here, okay? In replication group, you can specify for this primary server, this server should be the secondary server. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you that question, whether we do we have control on it. Right. So we have control and that is through session replication. Uh, Amit, can you help me share the screen, please? Okay. Okay. You are the presenter. Uh, yeah. So, Amit, just understand, if MS1 and MS2 are in the same office, in the same place in US. And this one is in Japan, MS4 is in Japan. So MS1 can also choose MS2 as a secondary server? Yes? Yeah, it is possible. It's possible. Yeah. But as both of them are either on the same Unix box or in the same uh, building structure, if power goes off here or something bad happens, both the primary <coughs> server and the secondary server will go off yeah. at the same time. Right. But what this will do is, this will cause a loss of session. Right. So this is where you want to compulsorily make MS1 should always make MS4 as the secondary server. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? Yeah. It also depends upon, you know, the hardware, how much hardware uh, 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 one server has versus the other server, the configuration, stuff like that. So you want to make a particular server with a better configuration have more sessions, right? Right. So stuff like that. So, but anyways, at times you want to specify which is the primary server, which, which should be the secondary server for a particular primary server. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, you can do it through replication groups, which we which we're going to be covering uh, in the next class. And once we are done with that, we will do the we will do session replication, persisting the session in memory we already did today because that is the default uh, in a file and in a database is what we'll do tomorrow. Uh, in the next class, we'll also be doing persistent store. Okay, just note persistent store we'll be doing. Okay. And we'll, we, we will then touch on JDBC database.